if you listen to no other advice in these top 10 tips, do this. Let's jump into some garage band, shall we? So here's your tip. You're going to tap on the share sheet button here. You are going to come down and go to save to files. And where you want to save this is on your on my iPad location in your garage band for iOS and your garage band file transfer folder. And we're going to hit save. It's going to tell me that's already there because I've already done this, but I'll just replace it. And that saved it into garage band. If we then flick our way back across to garage band, what you would notice if I didn't already have this here is you'd have a little blue one next to your loop here but if we jump in here you can see there it is it exports it as an m4a file so what i can do is click and drag this one in and just throw it here into my project and there you go it is ready to rock and roll uh oh we got a problem it's only imported the first eight bars. Now, I know if you've been using GarageBand for more than a couple of days, you've probably figured this out. But there's a couple of tips in here that you can use. Number one is if you come up here to your little plus button here, instead of having this section to be manual, you can change that to automatic. And as soon as you have this set to automatic, if we delete out that one, then if we go up to our loops and we bring in, what it'll do is it'll give us as much space as we need for whatever file we're bringing in. So you can see there, it'll automatically expand it out to the amount of bars that we need to bring in this file. You can then adjust that by hitting the plus there and changing this one up manually by dropping it back to there. But that's a hassle, yeah. So why don't we actually go and set it so that it's automatic every single time? You don't you don't got no time. Who's got time to do that? Who's got time to make sure that they set that every single time? Now, there's some advanced options. Many of you know this, some of you may not. They're not actually where you think they would be. They're not in the settings here. You can't come in here. This is a set of advanced options, but guess what? There's some advanced, advanced options that you can actually access, which are way out here in your settings. So if you come out here to your settings and you scroll down over on the left, what you need to do is actually find your separate garage band options and jump into these ones here. And you can see we got some cool things in here that we can actually change, including this one here, automatic recording length. And that selected means that when we start a new GarageBand project, every time we start a new project, what it's now going to do is instead of having that set to eight bars, it's automatically going to be set to automatic. If like me, you don't really know your, your C sharps from your D flats, it's a music joke, folks. They're the same note. But if you don't know your music theory too well, you can actually turn on keyboard note labels. So let's show you what it looks like here without note labels. So if we come here and we hit the plus button and we come across and we go to our keyboard instrument. Here's our keyboard. But it's labeled our C's, but it hasn't labeled any of our other notes. So that makes it kind of difficult. Whereas if we swipe up here and come over to our settings, let's come back to the GarageBand settings and let's jam on this one here, the keyboard note labels. Now, I've got to remember, does this update automatically or do we need to close and reopen? There it is, automagic. Over here in our GarageBand plugins, you'll notice that we have this one here, enable iOS effect plugins. Now, this used to be kind of a bit of a nice novelty but these days these plugins are actually really good these are like the next level plugins that they have in GarageBand Mac and they've recently spruced them up to make them really useful and effective if for instance I've got these drums and I want to I want to use some effects on here I can come in here to my plugins and EQ plugins and EQ and hit the edit button I can hit a plus button here there's all my standard GarageBand effects you're probably familiar with those there's 10 of them there you can use them to your heart's content but if you go over here to audio unit extensions these are the ones that you've downloaded from the app store but if you scroll to the very bottom all of these white and gray apple ones these are additional free plugins and they're actually pretty darn cool they've got some they've got some good options in here you've got a limiter you've got pitch change you've got um, sound isolation sample delays and uh, things like this au dynamics processor actually have a really cool like it's a really good way to set your compression because it actually shows you a nice graphical display let's show you what i mean if we hit play it actually shows you like input and output level you can adjust your attack and your release of your compression and it gives you like this visual view 
Back in version 2.1, Apple added this. They added the 24-bit audio resolution. So if you turn that one on, you can switch on and you can record, mix, or export audio in 24-bit resolution. Now, is this going to matter too much if you're using mainly Apple Loops and virtual instruments? Not a whole heap, but you might as well have that full resolution. If you're not sure what resolution is, 8-bit, 16-bit, 24-bit, 32-bit, it's the resolution. It's how much dynamic range can actually be used within a project. So this really helps you out if you're really trying to find something that's going to really cut through so have a really nice master that's nice and competitive in terms of volume and gain but also maintains a lot of those dynamics the notepad's actually super handy it's in a weird place it's here in your settings tap on that one and tap on your notepad and here you can actually type in notes so you could put for instance you can put the lyrics in here how many times or well, what i like to do is put in some mix notes drums louder in chorus. so when you're listening to it you can be listening to your track here come into your notepad and just start making notes on the fly consider your master effects like a bus like a master reverb and a master delay or echo bus so what you can do with these is say i've got these drums and i've got these vocals here so we've brought these in here so we've got the drums the bass and the vocals what i might want is my drums and my vocals to be kind of in the same space so i can turn up the reverb the master reverb to add a little reverb on the vocals i can then turn up the reverb to add a little reverb on the drums and when we bring these together how many times how many times will you break up with me? They can be kind of in the same, like have that same sound. I call it the glue. A lot of people do as well. It glues them together. Because remember, you're adding reverb to make it sound like you're in a space. Yeah. So if you want to sound like you're in the same space, using the same reverb across all your tracks is a good idea. Now you can actually change the type of reverb. So if you tap on the master effects there, you can come to reverb. And let's say for this one, we want this to be like a club sound because this is like a funk song. We want it to sound like we're in a club. So that's the reverb that we're going for. How many times? If you listen to no other advice in these top 10 tips, do this. And that is version control. GarageBand has terrible autosave and terrible ability to save yourself from yourself. What do I mean by that? Well, if we save out this project now, we come back out here to our project folder. This is saved in here. It's called How Many Tums. Now, what I recommend is this is my ideas folder. So I highly recommend, you don't have to do it exactly this way, but I have separate folders for my ideas, my in progress, and then my finished product. So what I would do here is I'm going to tap and hold on this, and I'm actually going to move this. I'm going to move this project from that folder. I'm going to go to iCloud Drive, and I'm going to take you a couple of seconds, but it's worth it. Go to my in progress folder and move it to there. So that's moved now. What I can do is go to that in progress folder now. So if we come back out here to iCloud Drive, just to show you the path, GarageBand for iOS, now in progress. And what I would do, you can see here I've done it a little bit sloppily here for some of these, but for some that I'm actually working on, I will create a, a folder for these. So for this one, because this is a project I'm going to work on, how many times is there? And then what we can do is actually move this, just drag that one into that folder, and there we go. Now, what I'll do from here is every time I work on this project and make some significant changes is tap and hold on this project. You know it if you've been with me before. Duplicate and look at that. It'll be a number two afterwards. So this is my original version with my idea. This is my number two. Ding. And now I'm going to jump into number two and start working on this. I come in here. I add a bunch of tracks. I do some mixing, whatever. I then jump out by saving, by hitting that button, do the same again. Tap and hold, duplicate, and go into number three. Oop. That was supposed to be an A chord. Let's undo it. Let's tap the undo. Oh, wait. Actually, that was exactly what I wanted to play. Let's redo it. Redo? What? Yes, tap and hold and redo recording. If, in, if, if you're not sure what something's going to do, if you tap and hold, it could actually give you what you want. So tapping it, tap and hold, redo. And look, you know, it doesn't keep a lot. I think it only keeps 10 levels of undo and redo. And the other thing is, once you close out of a project, this is something to keep in mind, you go out there and you come back in. No, nah, your undo's gone. And instead of playing... Instead of playing on the keys, we're going to use the chords mode. We're going to come over here to chords mode. And you're like, I don't want to use it. 
I don't want to use a GC and an F chord. I actually want to change it. Well, there's a couple of ways we can do this. Because we know that this is going to be in A major, not C major, if we come in here to our settings, we can actually change this and go A. And now it's going to be in A major. But that's great. But what if I want some real weird ass chord? Well, we can actually hit the, the settings button here. And did you notice that there's an extra setting in here? This edit chords button. If we're selecting a, a different type of track and we go to our settings, no edit chords button. But as soon as we are in a virtual instrument track and we go to our settings, edit chords. It is the most hidden. It's in a ridiculous location. It shouldn't be there, but it means that we can actually edit these chords. So let's just say along with this E and A and D, we wanted something really weird. We'll, we'll replace this C sharp minor. But what if we wanted something like an A sharp sustained six with a bass of an E? <laughs> kind of cool chord.